So we had the armed tech con. So who are you? I'm James Bruce and I'm ARM's Director of Mobile Strategy and really what I'm focusing upon is looking at a range of you know, next generation products, understanding where smartphones are going and how ARM, ARM IP can actually enhance that user experience. And I think one of the interesting things that we announced at um, ARM TechCon today, or in the last few days, is our Mali 720 and our Mali 760 announcement. Now the Mali 760 is a high-end graphics part aimed very much at high-end tablets, uh, superphone type devices, and designed to deliver the maximum performance uh, from the perspective of GPU compute through RenderScript or OpenCL, and also through the latest uh, graphics standards such as OpenGLAS 3.0. So you should be seeing uh, Mali-based devices using the 760 at some point in the future. Um, typically it's about 18 months to two years before you see an actual product shipping um, from when an actual when from when we actually announce a product uh, from the perspective of Mali T720 we're really excited about that because the uh, Mali T720 is aimed very much at the entry level slash mid tier smartphones and one of the challenges that we have in graphics today in 2013-2014 is there's a transition from OpenGLAS 2.0 to OpenGLAS 3.0 and also GPU compute and we've done a great job at delivering GPU compute GLES 3.0 at the high end and Mali T720 really allows you to deliver this, this functionality at a much lower price point and this is really important to the consumers because they don't want to have a phone that doesn't have access to the latest and greatest apps even if you're spending $150, $200 on a phone you really do expect it to have the latest and greatest features on there and to have that full application compatibility and that's what Mali T720 does. Does it work with Cortex A12? Absolutely it will work with Cortex A12, it will also work with any uh, Cortex A core. So I think what you'll see is a range of products um, anything from a Cortex A7, A53 to an A12 shipping with the Mali T720. While if you look at the Mali T760, that's very much going to be sort of Cortex A57 class products going into the high end super phones, going into the tablet space. So, but we have still a whole bunch of T600 series to be launched in products. So there is T628. Well, I mean, for example, if you look at the T628, that's available today on the Galaxy Note 3, a very impressive phone. So it's on there. It's on there. And this is shipping only since recently? It's only shipping recently. But I think it's very much back to my comment earlier that it takes time from an IP being developed, being released to our silicon partners to um, actual shipment to the devices. So there's certainly going to be a range of great uh, Mali T628, uh, 624, 622 products launched over the next year, year and a half. And you're also seeing that even at the lower price points. For example, you may have got a video of it earlier, but AM Logic was showing a tablet using a Quad A9 running at 2 gigahertz and then an Okta uh, Mali 450 graphics configuration. So the ARM roadmap, you've always got to think there's a long time between actual um, product announcement to, to um, well, a two-year time between product announcement and actual sort of devices in the market as a rough rule of thumb. So of, uh, this is 628, so the 624 and 622, uh, that's the names, right? Or 626, 624. So, uh, um, so this is the Mali T628. And that really, the, um, it describes the maximum number of cores it can have. So in this particular configuration, it has uh, six cores. And then um, the Mali T760 is a sort of really the next generation high performance uh, Mali graphics core. And uh, so, but uh, there's also the 678. 
And that's not yet in any product? That's not in any product. And the 678 is aimed at delivering greater GPU compute. So if you look at the 678 versus, let's say, the 628, there's a doubling in GPU compute performance. So it's aimed very much at products where cons um, the OEM really wants to differentiate features such as um, for example, the camera features, the video editing features, where you can take full advantage and you really need that extra GPU compute performance. And uh, so what else do you do? What's your, what else do you do every day? Ah, well, I don't want to go through the entire day, but I think, you know, the sort of things that I'm really worrying about and really looking at is user experience, um, because I think we're in a world where very much people have got slightly obsessed with benchmarks. And sometimes it's much more important to actually look at the user experience of the device. I mean, obviously, the user experience of a device like this at $600 is going to be completely different from a low-end smartphone such as this at $36. But the critical thing is, at those given price points, is the user experience going to match the expectation of the consumer? Is it going to run the use cases, the applications that they really care about? How do you measure that? Uh, do you so need to measure it? Yes, you do need to measure it. And I mean, there's several ways to do it. Um, you can look at things like launch time of applications. Uh, you can also look at the frame rate of applications. Uh, so you can actually see, does the application have a continuous 30 frames per second frame rate? Or is the application running at, let's say, a jerky 10 frames per second with great variance? Because that will be perceived as a bad user experience to the consumer. So do you need the very high speed cameras and measure with that? Or how do you measure? Because you need to measure externally. You can't just like hook things in and try to... Oh, well, actually can you? you can. So there's actually statistics that you can actually collect on the Android handsets. Um, it's called Jank. And you can actually get the Jank measurements for particular applications, for a particular open a window screen. And you can use those to actually measure the effective frame rate and variance in frame rate of that application. So you wouldn't uh, need to do something like uh, external, like have a lab and have people come in, like n new users and experienced users, and they would each like actually touch the screen and you would measure stuff. That's too much work. That's no need. Well, I mean, obviously, in the ideal world, you would have, you know, vast number of users coming in, trying different things. How does it work for their particular use cases? The challenge is, is when you do something like that, it requires how do you ensure consistency? For example, a new user is only a new user for about uh, two minutes. After that, he becomes an experienced or they become an experienced user and they'll become faster. So it's really ensuring that you have the consistency by you know, going through a particular script, going through a very consistent set of actions, and then measuring the frame rate of that, or the jank of that particular application. So Android is completely awesome, right? Absolutely, yeah. So how do you coordinate? I guess there's lots of secret things going on to coordinate how the, the roadmap needs to be to support as many low-end phones to high-end and everything? Well, and this is probably something that you're going to look at later on today, but I believe the Google K announcement, uh, KitKat announcement, has been announced today. And I think they're talking about how they actually bring some of the capabilities, the higher-end capabilities, down to a lower price point to these uh, lower-cost phones. And I think the important thing to remember is that we're already doing a very good job on these entry-level devices. I mean, I think, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a phone here, um, which you kindly demonstrated to me, uh, $36. Um, it's only 2G. But to think that you can actually get a $36 smartphone using the Cortex-A5 um, at I mean, it was just something unimaginable um, two or three years ago. Two or three years ago, we were thinking, you know, $60, $70 was the limit. And now we're actually at half this limit. And that's having a really interesting impact on the market because what you're seeing now is because these devices are so cheap, uh, people aren't actually bothering to buy um, feature phones. They're actually buying smartphones because even if you're doing basic things like texting, taking pictures, 
um, doing a bit of browsing, the user experience on a smartphone is always better than that of a feature phone. What can ARM do to improve the user experience? You're just doing the chips, no? Well, we don't even do the chips, we do the IP, and it's very much, um, first of all, we can actually provide um, feedback to the people involved, uh, silicon partners, OEMs, sort of, perhaps the software optimizations can actually improve the user experience, but also it's very much about the ARM philosophy of delivering uh, more for less. And I think you've really seen this with our Cortex-A5, our Cortex-A7 series, and also the Cortex-A53. And if you look at the Cortex-A53, um, that has greater performance than the Cortex-A9, it is smaller than a Cortex-A9, and also adds 64-bit support through the ARM V8A architecture. So I think it's really interesting to see how the ARM product roadmap is very much not about onwards and upwards, as perhaps some other people's um, roadmaps are. It's really how to deliver them, continuously deliver more efficiency, more capacity within given size or uh, power budgets. So I'm guessing here that the, the designers at ARM that, that sit and that work on these designs for a while, months, but it's, it's got to be so gratifying to see or to just you know, like, imagine, the, 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 because the smartphone is basically the ultimate uh, oh, mass market success story here. Absolutely. And, I mean, I think it's very impressive. I mean, if we go back to the Cortex-A5, the fact that there's more Cortex-A5 handsets that were shipped in Q2 uh, this year compared to the total number of PCs that were shipped. So I think that really shows that even on just one particular ARM core at one particular price point, it's, it's outshipping uh, PC devices, both de desktops and laptops. And I, I thought, or maybe I heard people think that Cortex-A5 didn't really exist. And <laughs> you're saying it ships more than PCs, just that one? Just that one, yep. And then obviously we've got our partners with their own great architectural solutions. We've got smartphones shipping Cortex-A9. Cortex A15 and some great solutions around the Cortex A7 as well. Which one is more popular in phones? Is that uh, secret? Um, so I think if you look at uh, smartphones, it's very hard to say which one's more popular. But I, I would certainly say that you know, given that it's an entry level market, given the price point, I mean, $36 you're going to sell a lot more $36 handsets than you're going to sell uh, $600 handsets. All right, so it's, it's a crazy world, and the next year is going to be even crazier? Um, well, I wouldn't use the word crazy, but I think you know, continuous cha change, continuous innovation is always exciting. And I think that's the great thing about the ARM processors is that, as you mentioned earlier, we've got a lot of engineers working very hard um, designing these new CPUs, these new GPUs. And what you really see is that you see these products going into devices that you didn't even think about. So it could be price points that you never thought about, or it could be configurations that you never thought about, or it could be into devices that you just never thought about. I mean, all these sort of new wearable technology that's coming to market, this sort of hardware app ecosystem that's building around smartphones, all the way from fun sort of uh, remote-controlled drones with cameras, cars, these ferro balls, to wearables, watches, Fitbits. All of those are sort of being built around the ARM processor. And the really nice thing is, is that very often when we're designing these CPUs, these GPUs, we didn't even think that they would go into these particular products. Actually, to be honest with some of them, we didn't even think that they would exist.